Good morning and welcome to the last of our uh, Who I Am in Christ confessions. Um, this is number 36 and we've been doing this for, oh, I don't know, two or three months now. And uh, I trust that your foundation and security and the victory that is yours in Christ Jesus as born again children of God is becoming a reality and that it's something that you are starting to live out and can I encourage you if it isn't go on to our YouTube page go back to the very first session and listen to these again because as Christians we have a fantastic and phenomenal uh, ability to forget and we need to be reminded constantly and uh, my hope and prayer for you is that by now the Holy Spirit has started opening your eyes to who you are in Christ and that you are walking in victory and beginning to see victory and beginning to see who you are in Christ Jesus and the truth of who you are, not listening to the lies. See, the enemy binds us in chains and those chains are lies. Every single one of those links in the chain is a lie. And the minute you know the truth, the chain can be broken. And so I trust that you are standing on the truth of who Jesus is to you. And today we're dealing with a fantastic Bible verse. It's probably one I went to a, a ACE school, a Christian school system. And uh, it's one of the verses that has, has stuck in my mind. Because we learned a, a, a memory verse with each subject every day, a pace that we did. And here it is. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that specific verse is Philippians 4.13. But I want to give some context. And we're going to read from uh, Philippians 4, verse 11 to 13. Verse 11 starts off, Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means. And I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. Verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is a philosophy that has crept into the church. And it is incredibly dangerous. Because there are many Christians who believe it and fall for it and don't realize it. And that's the New Age philosophy. I want to just read something that I found this morning in doing some research from the Pew Research Center. Most American adults self-identify as Christians. But many Christians also hold what are sometimes characterized as New Age beliefs including belief in reincarnation, astrology, psychics, and the presence of spiritual energy and physical objects like mountains or trees. Many Americans who are religiously unaffiliated also have these beliefs. Overall, roughly 6 in 10 American adults accept at least one of these New Age beliefs. Specifically, 4 in 10 believe in psychics and that spiritual energy can be found in physical objects. While somewhat smaller share, shares express belief in reincarnation and astrology. And I just want to say that those New Age beliefs are completely contradictory to Christianity and the Word of God. They are lies from the pit of hell, every single one of them. Reincarnation is a lie. Astrology is a lie from the pit of hell. Psychics. They are lies from the pit of hell. This presence of spiritual energy and physical objects, a lie from the pit of hell. And yet Christians believe in that. And why, why, why do I bring this into a, a, a verse that says, oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? I want to just read from Neil's uh, devotional. Now, can I encourage you to go out and buy it? Who I Am in Christ by Neil T. Anderson. And his devotions deal with all of the subjects that we've dealt with, who I am in Christ. This is what he says, New Age versus Christianity. New Age philosophers say 
if you believe something enough, it will come true. They argue that we can create reality with our minds. In order to do that, we would have to be gods, which is precisely what they are saying. The lie goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You will be like God. Genesis 3 verse 5. Christianity says, it is true, therefore I believe it. Believing something doesn't make it true. And not believing doesn't cause it to go away. Jesus prayed for us concerning this in his high priestly prayer in John 17 verse 15 and 17. It says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. We believe in God and walk by faith according to his word. We don't just believe for the sake of believing. We have an object of our belief. And that's Jesus Christ. It's God. It's the word of God. The Christian community has been somewhat reluctant to buy into this well-known axiom. And for good reason. Thinking is a function of the mind and cannot exceed its inputs and attributes. Any attempt to push the mind beyond its limitations will only result in moving from the world of reality into fantasy. Believing something beyond what we know to be biblically true is not faith. It is presumption, and we dare not presume upon God. The Christian, however, has a far greater potential in the power of believing the truth. Belief incorporates the mind, but is not limited by it. A lot of biblical truth I believe, but I don't fully understand. Belief or faith actually transcends the limitations of the mind and incorporates the world that is unseen but not unreal. With the infinite God of the universe as the object of Christian faith, what can stop the Christian if God wants something done? Couple that with the fact that if it doesn't take any more effort to believe that one can than to believe that one cannot. The issue is choosing truth and taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ instead of believing the enemy's lies. Because you are God's child, you can confront doubts and unbelief. You see, we have an object of our belief. We don't just believe for the sake of believing, which is what New Age says. The more you believe something, the more you can make it happening. That's absolute nonsense and fantasy. We believe in Jesus. He is the object of our belief. And because of that, things happen. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What is those all things? You know what? Uh, uh, does that mean that I can go climb Mount Everest and just believe I can do all things? Does that mean that I, I can become a, a millionaire overnight and just believe that I can? And all things, God's going to... No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. There's context. That's why we read the thing. The all things are the things that God has planned for you. Remember, He has a specific plan for you. He has prepared good works for you to do. And He wants you to do those things. He calls you. He tells you. He commands you to do those things. He would be a very, very mean God who tells us to do things that we can't do. We'd lose trust in Him if that had to be. But God says, I want you to do this. And it's just beyond our reach. And then He says, I want you to do this. You know, after a while, you're not going to listen to what God wants you to do because you don't believe it. But if God has a plan for your life, He's given you the power to do it. And you can do it through Christ. That's the key. God calls us to do what can be done through Christ. Our source of strength is found in Christ alone. We cannot do what He has called us to do in our strength. So don't go off and run and try to do God's plan in your own strength. We need to do it in the strength of Christ. We need to have Jesus' power and wisdom in order to do what needs to be done. How do we have or get that power and strength to do it? That's, that's the secret, isn't it? Well, firstly, only a Christian, a born-again child of God, can do what God wants him to do. Because when you became a Christian, you received the power. The Holy Spirit came 
inside of you. Listen to Ephesians 3 verse 16 and 20. I'm just going to go back here. I'm in Philippians. Ephesians is one book back. Listen to this. I'm going to read from verse 14. It's one of the two prayers that, that Paul prays in, uh, in Ephesians. And this is really powerful. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. We have access to that power. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is nothing that I cannot do when it is within the will of God that He wants me to do. Nothing. There is nothing. If God tells me, it doesn't matter how big the mountain is. If God has told me to do it, I can do it. Because He has given me the power. My friend, He has given you the power. He has given you the authority to do what He wants you to do. You can sit there and moan and complain about your life. Or you can tap into it. And believe that God has a plan and a purpose for you. And that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Remember what I said, I think it was yesterday. Stop running someone else's race. Stop doing what God's called someone else to do and start doing what He's called you to do. Because then you will realize that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God's not going to strengthen you to do somebody else's job. It doesn't matter if you're better at it than they are. It's what God wants them to do. Start doing what He wants you to do and start walking in the strength of what He's called you to do. Can I just say that we have a role to play in it? And that is in the intimacy that we have with Jesus and the sanctification of our lives. Let me explain that just a little bit. When we got saved, we weren't just wiped clean of all of our thoughts and abilities and, and the world was still in us. We still were sinful. We still had old habits that needed to be dealt with. But between here when we gave our lives to Jesus and here, when either Jesus comes again or calls us home, is where our sanctification takes place. And all that that means is that we become more and more like Jesus. We are meant to grow in our relationship with Him. We are meant to become more and more holy. And you know, the holier that we get, the closer that we get to Jesus, the more we realize that power, the more we understand it, the more we get on board with what God is doing. If you've been a Christian for a long time, but you haven't been living that sanctification process, can I say that it's time to surrender to Jesus, to die to yourself, to die to what you want, and to live for what He wants. Here's the lie of the enemy. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I don't know how. We buy into that lie. Here's the truth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He loves you. And He has a plan and a purpose for your life. You were not created just to take up space and oxygen. You were created because long beforehand, before you were born, God created good works for you to do. They are planned and especially made and created for you. That's where I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I trust that you start living that.
start living that life of purpose and victory through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. And I want to thank you that your word gives us truth. And Lord, it's that truth that allows us to break the chains of the enemy. Lord, those lies can be powerful. Sometimes those chains are maybe as flimsy as a piece of string. And we can break them quite easily. But sometimes those lies and those chains, they feel like thick chains that I think, you know, they, the, the chains that they use to anchor boats, Lord. And we just feel like we can't. But Lord, we can through you. And because your word is true, Lord Jesus, your word breaks the lie of the enemy. And Lord, regardless of how bound we are in our lives, if we come to your truth, your word, in humility, Lord Jesus, that's what shatters the lie of the enemy. I thank you, Lord Jesus, you've created us for freedom. You've created us for victory. And there is nothing that we cannot do, Lord Jesus, with you on our side. Our oh, Lord, I love you. Pray for your protection and blessing upon every single person who listens to this and watches this. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would find victory in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. I trust you have a wonderful day today. Um, this has been a lovely process and road that we've taken a journey. And um, next week, Monday, I'm going to finish it all off. I just feel that it needs to be tied up and wrapped up in a bow. And uh, so I will see you again on next Monday and uh, we'll tie this all up. God bless you. Have a great weekend.